Okay. We are live. Live? Am I live with the flooded basement? Yes, of course, of course. And I'm joined today, episode 34 of Flooded Cinema, by what alias are you going by now? Uh, my at is Hellenic Aryan, and my name is Zar Luca. Zar Luca, very nice, okay. Well, today we're discussing, I guess, two high school movies, was sort of the theme in the end. We're discussing one of Flood's favorite films, which he calls a classic. Yeah. Yeah. Donnie Darker and I Want to Eat Your Pancreas. So, had you, sir, had you seen I Want to Eat Your Pancreas? Like, it's just a random... So, I want to, uh, I, uh, when I got into anime, I didn't really like shonen anime, like Dargan Ball or Trash Rudo (laughs) or One Piece. So, I got into the rom-com, The Slice of Life, because it was like not 300 episodes and it was paced well. Yeah. And, uh, this one is kind, it was kind of like Your Lie in April, and initially I liked Your Lie in April more because there was more of it, but now that I think about it, this one is paced a lot better and they cut off... Um, a lot of the unnecessary stuff. I'm not yeah. gonna get into a rant, but I'll just say I, uh, I it was a slice of life. I love slice of life. It's my favorite genre, and okay. uh, I decided to watch it with some friends. This is actually um, I I live with one of my animator friends. I'm not gonna dox him because he probably doesn't want to be um, associated <laughs> with me. Or but uh, I want I want to say like before this film, he didn't he never saw a film like I'm um, not a film a show from japan that like showed the slice of life western kind of thing where they're just like hanging out courting women um like he likes the show 16 like some french canadian show and a bunch of like other like dude bro shows like baywatch i don't know and to, he liked this one because like it kind of showed them just doing random stuff together uh, but that, okay. that's the end that's the end of my rant i i just found it because it was slice of life oh uh, okay because this is your pick, these two films. Like, you curated this episode, so... I was well, just curious. I knew, I, I knew you liked Donnie Darko, and I wanted to pick uh, another... I needed to pair it with a uh, film about death. Uh, this is the... okay. This is uh, the reposal from the Redditor's point of view. This is what we're going to deconstruct today. It's true, true. Uh, I mean, I... um. Yeah, I don't know. I guess there was some mis. It wasn't like I don't. Know. This was a good pair. I thought it was a good pair. Um, I just thought it was. I think I misheard you saying something about there was like the Grim Reaper was in. I want to eat your pancreas. Or there was some no, I- more supernatural element to it. But no, it's it's just it's a. Um, so I think I I should have rewatched because I was watching it the whole time. And I'm like, huh? When are they gonna reintroduce this supernatural element <laughs> into the film? <laughs> <laughs> and so I got to the end and I'm like oh it's just and I was a bit confused but um it's a I liked it I thought it was you know it's a cute it's a cute movie sentimental sort of movie um you call you called it generic yeah it is I mean it's very I mean what's <laughs> what's special I mean what's special about it from a narrative point of view I would say well it's not about the plot it's about the characters that would be my rebuttal yeah, but what's special about the characters, in your opinion? I don't want to say I liked it. I liked it overall, but it was just like, you know, aloof guy, manic pixie dream girl, and they fall in love, and well, you know, which is a fine, they, fine movie. I don't mind to watch. I don't mind watching that. I think, um, just in general, it is a common Japanese trope, but I like it that even if two characters fall in love they either the show ends with them becoming a couple like they don't show what happens after or yeah. the guy just doesn't get the girl and i like i like it when the guy doesn't not because i'm a nihilist or whatever but like like this or your line april i like when the guy doesn't get the girl because that's real life especially yeah. for our age demographic um yeah. he's just not gonna that's it's not all sunshines and rainbows it's not something that life is life is not life is a punishment it's a result or the fall is how we are now i'm not going to say life is a punishment it's a gift but the way we are now is because of the fall so yeah i'm i think japanese like uh slice of life media presents it in a very 
I guess, realistic manner. If there's no supernatural events, even though it's not, like, it doesn't deviate from, like, a base template of Slice of Life. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not, um... I guess, because I was... I, sorry, I just went into it expecting there to be, like, a twist or something. Like, I thought... Anyway, but it doesn't... But, you know, I'm just saying, I you know, it's just a standard romance sort of thing. I don't know, like... There's lots of movies where people fall in love and then one of the characters is dying and then they die at the end. Uh, but those are like aimed at women and they'll have like some like very bad dialogue. That's true. This this was well the the romance in the courting was um was never cringe. It was yeah, it was really well done. There was lots of cute cute scenes like uh, when they're uh in the hotel room was really cute. I like that scene. What what have I got here in my notes? Uh, Do you want to go go through the pl- plot in chronological order? No, just no, talk about what just we like? vibes. Just no, no, no. We don't need to. We well, don't need to recount the the film. That's kind of what I liked about it. Like, I, I'm not gonna say it's the most realistic thing ever, but this is kind of how people in the millennial generation, us, like yeah. this is how we court women. Like we get. We get underage drunk at a hotel and, like, don't even... We're too afraid to, like, actually make a move. And we just, like... Uh, we just do a bunch of quirky, weird shit. And even that scene where um she tries to, like, make a move on him and, like, his autism acts up and he, like, gets furious at her. Yeah. Um, I think that's very... Is that relatable for th- you? No, it's... I think, like, a lot of these films are very millennial-ish. Like, yeah. they... Yeah. They represent our struggle, um, and yeah. I think because Japan, the Japanese are very well acquainted with this. They have like not to shit on them, but they have like low birth rates. A lot of them have <laughs> never even like had a girlfriend, and I think that's why I like them because they know the struggle. They know they know how to write these characters well because they that is their struggle. They did go through this. So they know how it goes. Yeah, yeah, it is funny. Like um, comparing the main character of this to Donnie Darko, where I mean, there's. But basically, like, you know, Donnie Darker, he's still, like, cool, even though he's supposedly this sort of weirdo guy. Well, we'll get to that later, because I'm gonna, like, <laughs> trash that character. <laughs> but... Alright, we'll stick with this, but I, I like... So, what did you think? I just... I guess I just found the main character a bit frustrating. But that's... I guess that's the point of his character, is well, that he, he uses his aloofness to cover up the fact that, I guess, he's, like, insecure and shy. Well, that I think the character does remind me a lot of myself because that, I, I think until around the age of seventeen, I was like that. I it yeah. wasn't just women. I it wasn't that I hated everyone. I just could not communicate with anyone. Mm. I was really bad at it. So I don't think it was like something out of malice that he did. No, he just no. that weird. Yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, I felt like. Like I said, my friend who doesn't like Slice of Life liked it because it's relatable to, like, an American story. This stuff is could happen in, like, to any random American teenager. Wait, we, we may have, uh, Cool Guy may jump in. Oh, alright. Is he gonna jump in right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. how do I... How do I add him well, to this? We're in a call. It's only two people, so we're gonna have to restart the whole stream. Oh, that's okay. On. We'll just we'll jump over to we'll jump over to uh, the the flooded cinema channel. All right, everyone. You sure? Go. Yeah, yeah. If he wants to jump in, yeah, give, we'll we'll jump over. It's only take two seconds. All right, let's go. Hello. Hey. You're live, by the way. So, All right. we're, live. we're live. We're still live. We're still live. <laughs> I am I am on the app. Oh, okay. Because I thought you were going to sleep, bro. I yeah. was, and you hopped on two minutes later. Oh, okay, okay. We well, told okay. you we were going to start two minutes later. No? <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. We're so, well, you can dip after we finish talking about I want your, to eat your pancreas anyways. Yeah. So we're starting with that movie. And then you don't have to, if you, cause you didn't, did you watch Donnie Darko in the end? No. Uh, no, I didn't watch it. Yeah. Don't worry then. So I was just, uh, saying that I felt like the film was overall really 
very relatable to millennial struggles. Like that's how a millennial would act aloof, like, and that's how he would date or court a girl, like awkwardly drink with her, things like that. So if that was what the last thing I said. I don't know what you want to say, Sarah. I don't know what your appraisal of the film was. Uh, I don't have an appraisal of it. I didn't watch Donnie Darko. Oh no, we're talking. No, uh, <laughs> We're talking about I want to eat your pancreas. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was a good movie. It wasn't really like an anime movie, I would say. It was more like just an, an actual like romance movie that was animated. Uh, our style yeah. was sort of like uh, it was sort of generic, and it definitely falls apart at some points. Like the animation is not super high quality, but it's not terrible either, and it is a very pretty film. Yeah. And I thought that it was a very uh, a very nice story. Yeah. Sort of deciding to uh, deciding to love one someone in spite of the fact they're they're going to die. Yeah. It's something that I've seen a few times play out in real life as well, where people have decided that they were going to love cancer patients and be there at their death. And it is a pretty terribly sad thing to happen. The uh, obviously the movie ends prematurely, even though the uh, the ending is foreshadowed near the beginning yeah and it does seem like they decided to cut it at one an hour and 40 minutes i guess because they like ran out of money rather than do a two and a half hour movie which i really think would have been appropriate in this case but um uh, it also i think it also nails uh male and female gender dynamics as well yeah. the it seems like they both act exactly like you would expect them to act and even even right down things like oh i want to uh the girl, the girl says, I want to uh, do something with a boy that doesn't care anything about me, and then stops, is, uh, so I think sort of nails uh, the female psychology there. <laughs> and, yeah. And, um... Because she was, she was uh, just trying to, like, push him to say, actually, I care about you, basically. And he was just too autistic. Yeah, Which I was guess cute. So. It was That's like a, yeah, that was a cute like i'll just describe this movie as like extremely cute and i'll admit like at the end when he's reading a diary i was it got to me a bit i was like was like i wouldn't say like a, a tear gate came to my eye but like you know we were i was like a close-ish close-ish i was like damn that's that'd be brutal yeah yeah it's pretty brutal it's also wish fulfillment to an extent like obviously no one is going to take interest in a guy that's super uh quiet like yeah. actually like, like that's not that's not always the case but I don't really know. yeah yeah right like you do actually have to go and put yourself out there but it's still a nice little uh a nice little dichotomy there between an extremely shy and extremely extroverted person yeah it's um yeah manic pixie dream girl type thing like sad sack guy like learns to you know get along also, with people yeah I would say flooded. You, um, I haven't watched like the live action films, but the, there are a lot of films where you um, like that have a plot like this, like the Fault in Our Stars. I have not seen it, but the difference between this and that is this is for the boys, this is for gamers, this isn't for <laughs> women. This is not for women, so the dialogue isn't gonna, like you said, it's not gonna be very awkward and weird. Yeah, I yeah. think uh, com like this compared to other things in that sort of like sick you know what is it dotted what would you call it there's a name for it but it's like something romance like you know i don't know hospital romance type things like this is um it this movie doesn't try to philosophize too much like it doesn't like a lot of those movies it's just always people just get like they do like little speeches about living your life and whatnot but it's not too it's not pretentious or anything like that and that's what i think i really liked about this movie it's very I... comfortable with what it is, and it doesn't really have to philosophize. Like, yeah, I noticed. I noticed with anime a lot, with J Japanese media in general, is that they don't tend to go on tangents very often. At least if they have the budget for animation, things just tend to sort of happen, and that's how stories should go. Because writers are generally not very smart people, but when they're just writing about stuff happening, then they don't yeah. really have to go on a tangent to explain um, something deeper. Yeah, that's, that's actually true cool guy was telling me yesterday and i agree with this there was like very they philosophized but just a little bit it was kind of a secular version of we're all icons of christ and we all interact with each other in some regard yeah 
Yeah, that that was interesting. The uh, the girl defines uh, life in relation to others. Actually, the uh, you know going and hugging others and being nice to everyone else and all that stuff. But it's sort of true in that uh, the way in which we are defined really is in relation to others and how we treat other people, and especially so in relation to God. Yeah. It reminded me of there's that uh, Kafka quote where he says, uh, you can choose to hide yourself away from the suffering of the world, but maybe that's the one suffering you uh, could have avoided. Yeah. Sort of thing. But... um. Yeah, and I think it's it's uh, nice to see yeah, the guy like get become. I thought he was gonna end up with uh, Kierke at the end. Like I thought that was like the kind of the the setup. Wait, you didn't you didn't watch the post credit scene? He doesn't end up with her. They're friends because she has the gum. Ooh. She has the gum, and then well, it's like. No, he he said he said he w- she would date him after entrance exams. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. He she says she says we're we're not gonna date till after exams, and then he says, oh, that'll make him study hard. No, there's a manga after it where they do end up together, and they. Have oh a daughter. well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't read the manga, but that was the that was the implication. So were they both talking about each other in the third person? In that scene, let me pull this shit up. Maybe my subtitles were wrong, but it, I, remember, I, respect, I respect the premature death. Now that I know that there's a manga there, I thought it was just a movie and no manga. Well, it's originally based on a web novel and then a manga and then a film. Uh, okay. I think it's pretty crazy how like this is supposed to be a pr- very grounded anime, and then at the same time. Uh, they're like, oh yeah, she just gets killed by a random stab, uh, by a random knife murder in Japan. <laughs> yeah, that was a huge ass pull. Like that was probably the worst part of the film. But because the plot was not like the center of the film, the characters were, it wasn't as bad as like, if if the plot was the center of the film, it would have been worse. True. It, I think the thing is, it's it since it sort of worked thematically. I mean, it was a little rushed. And it was a little melodramatic, but I think since it fit thematically, because the whole time it's sort of like, oh, she's dying, she's dying. And she's like, well, you could be dying as well. And then it just, she's the one that ends up having this sort of even more tragic death. So, yeah, it sort of works. How did you feel about uh, her not telling her best friend that she was dying flooded? I thought that was like really dog. Like that was, I mean, that's just how animes and stuff write characters but realistically that's like a horrible horrible thing to do (laughs) she was a really bad friend i mean that's how kind of the japanese are they're loners they're secluded they're uh anti-social introverts so i don't know if that's out of the realm of possibility for them i guess it's not out of the realm but i would still consider it like a shitty thing to do you know speaking of the premature death in the movie I uh, I feel like that's actually kind of true to real life, and that no one really gets to choose when they're going. No one really knows exactly when they're going to go. Yeah. Like you really very rarely ever get a lead up to uh, someone's death. Even even uh, thinking about my great grandmother, for example, like where we, when we knew pretty much when she was going to pass away, we still couldn't time things to be there when mm-hmm. uh, when it went down. Right, still had to go back up to the uh, still had to go back home because my dad just ran out of vacation time, for example. Like, just, you really never get to choose. No, no, yeah. Um, what else have I got written here? Oh, have either of you read The um, Little Prince? I don't know anything about that book. I Like, it gets mentioned in so many movies. No, I haven't I didn't, read it. I haven't read it either. I, I've only well, ever heard it through per- movies. It's probably thematically important to the movie. Before uh, before we close up this movie, um, what are you guys' thoughts on the characters since that is what the film focused on, the two main characters? I thought they were they were grounded for anime characters, uh, and they were like they were quite they were quite well well written and everything. I came to like the guy a lot more. Uh, yeah towards the end like when he does open up a bit more i just guess i was just found him frustrated like i just found it a bit frustrating because like i'm just like 
she likes you, dude. Just go up and talk to her, sort of thing. And it was, <laughs> but you know that was that's the whole point of the movie. But uh, yeah, you know, I don't know. I I I always like identify with. I think I identify with the character pretty strongly throughout the movie, just because I used to be pretty stuck in my own head in mm-hmm. high school and eventually got out of that. You know, it wasn't it wasn't something that I chose. Like this is something the protagonist chooses in the movie. But I was I'm pretty glad that I got out of that headspace yeah eventually yeah no one's going to pull you out of it you have to choose to come out of it yourself yeah i agree that's what i was telling flooded uh he reminds me of myself and i don't think it's malicious i just think that's kind of the habits he has that's kind of how he thinks i don't think i'm not saying it's malicious or anything like that i was just saying like it's sort of like it's just yeah it's a habit that forms from oh you're shy so you know, if in a situation where you could choose to stay home or go out and meet people, you'd choose to stay home, and then that forms as a habit, and over time, slowly, you just become more and more like reclusive in your and in your head, sort of thing. Yeah. And here's yeah. the thing, too. Like, uh, like I said, no one's gonna pull you out of it, but that's not necessarily entirely true either. Like, no one's gonna try as hard as the girl in the movie does, but you know, I think every everyone that was a recluse in high school uh, knows that there are people that uh, invited them somewhere or try to talk to them and they just turn them down yeah yeah Yeah. and i was telling flood this i actually had have had similar like scenarios as like the whole drinking hotel scenario that was in the film that was very um i can relate to that a lot even though it's not it didn't exactly go down that way i wasn't that like bad but (laughs) yeah Something else the movie does very well is it really gets you to think on mortality and how little time mm-hmm. you have, yeah. which is which is always something these things do. Um, Clan Ed, for example, like I don't want to, I don't want to, we've spoiled this movie, but the movie like spoils itself at the very start. Yeah. The um, I don't want to spoil Clan Ed, but the stuff that goes on goes on in there really makes you uh, not fear mortality, but sort of just uh, understand you're not here forever yeah and yeah. you know the people that you love aren't here forever hmm. yeah and uh to that point uh, my closing thoughts on the characters also i felt like the girl like cool guy said the way when she invited him over to game she reacted like how a like irl girl would react if she's playing games with you what yeah. not like playing video games but like playing mental games yeah 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 Yeah. because she she was at that point she was probably aware that he liked her and she obviously liked him and it was just a matter of she was trying to needle him to get him to crack and confess to her but um yeah and i'll say this yeah it sort of feels like the author has been through these life situations before as well yeah he's actually writing from experience yeah it is it's very like sad that, uh, now the more i'm thinking about it i'm like damn yeah that's tough it's not like that visual novel where people complained it was unrealistic and then the author said i'm sorry i've literally <laughs> never been in a relationship before <laughs> yeah damn wait uh flooded pixels on a screen make you sad yeah i get it i've been Based. getting more and more emotional lately Base. I don't know. Like I, this, you is, this is gonna. Bro. No, no, You're not no. Stone cold anymore. No, well, it's more like since I've become Christian, I've been more affected by plots and things. I guess. Yeah. Just generally. So. That's it is. It is funny how oftentimes these things have a pretty deep impact on us. So, like. um I, I'm gonna, gonna come back to Planet again because it really is an important an important show to me. It was sort of like the uh, the first time I actually uh, wanted to become a father. Really, like really wanted to uh, to love someone. Mm. Like before that, it was like just sort of romanticized ideals and something as grounded as that, where it shows you just how wrong things can go and yeah. how important it is to uh, to love people anyway. That is. It's not something that you really, I think, I've ever seen over here in Western media. Mm. Yeah. No, I actually, actually think this film was 
in a sense aimed not exclusively at westerners but it wasn't they didn't put a lot of emphasis on the art style there wasn't like fan service there wasn't a lot of the things that the japanese there wasn't a lot of japanese things that would appeal to that audience it was more so just like a very grounded story like cool guy said it's just a romance story that got animated it's not really an anime story yeah it's something you could watch with your family too watch, watch, yeah. watch it with your parents like it's not it's not weird to watch who wrote it by the way written by uh, i don't know who wrote the web novel to be honest uh, yoru sumino i was just curious if it was a dude that wrote it but yeah it was it's interesting that uh, in japanese culture there's like a lot more male romance writers i don't know well just because in general in general there there is such a interest in romance stories for like men to consume whereas that's not really a thing at all in the west yeah and they're in yeah, that position here. sorry yeah over here we get things like hallmark movies a lot of the time and um, a lot of the romance is written for women and it'll be written by by a woman or by a gay man or it'll just be a wish fulfillment like the uh, I, I want to be a 30 year old single mom and then have two men fighting over me <laughs> which like this movie is like sort of wish fulfillment but it's not that much right it's believe the circumstances of the film make it believable like what she was saying about the fact that she just wants to simultaneously be, like be able to live truth be truthful honest with op and open with someone but not have them like freak out about the fact that she's like dying and sick yeah so it makes sense that she would pick this guy so it, all, it, it like it's yeah it's you know it's a good movie and I even like even the reactions were pretty authentic like he would repeatedly ask her are you seriously dying like multiple times throughout the film because he was coping about it yeah I think the the moment that he realizes that it she that she's going to die is when he opens her bag and then he sees the medicine yeah 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 Oh man, yeah, it's a really good movie. Now that like we're talking about it, the more I'm thinking about it, because the, yeah, the are the only, I think I, <laughs> I kind of semi just wrecked my viewing experience. Not wrecked it, but it was just because I was expecting some supernatural twist because I completely misremembered what you said about the film. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't say it had any supernatural events. That's, I, that's why I picked it because it's 100 percent like realistic. Yeah, I. I don't know where I got that from, but anyway, that's not relevant to my appraisal of the film. It's a, it is a really nice film. Yeah, I would, I would recommend it pretty much. It's, yeah, if, if you, you like anime, it, for sure. If you like anime, for sure. I don't think th I will say I don't think if you're like don't like anime, I don't think uh, I wouldn't say this is like the starter anime. If you're like skept, if you're anime skeptical which I don't think too many people in this in the audience of this would be, but I'm just saying. Yeah. What were you going to say? If you want to watch an uh, anime that's similar, to the, that's similar to this, and at the same time also has those supernatural elements that are going to flip things on their heads, then uh, I'm going to mention it again. Clan Ed does have those, and it yeah. has them from the very start of the show. How many episodes is that? It is very long. There's oh. two seasons to it. Uh, the first season is a little bit shorter, and it's just the introduction. And the second season is where they really hone in on the uh, all the things that are they're going to set Clanet apart from every other anime you're going to watch. Mm. Maybe, maybe or you can, uh, watch it. or you can uh, read the 80 hour visual novel like Nazrin did. Is that the uh, 80 is sort of lowballing it, man? I think it's a lot more than 80. Oh my gosh. How do you people have time for all this weeb content? I don't, I don't, do not understand I, it. Dude, I, I have never finished a visual novel besides Danganronpa, and that's like twenty hours. Yeah, growing up, the only way that I finished Clan Ed was that I would finish all my schooling, and I would go to my room and I would watch it until like uh, until like one in the morning, and I would only get a few hours of sleep. Yo, whose phone was that? Come on, keep it that together. That was me. Sorry. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Oh my gosh. Um, it, it's Jover. Bro, we we pause the the stream midstream. <laughs> Come on, you can't you can't get mad at me. This is uh, oh well, 
aside from yeah, this is still good discussion. Um, is there anything else you guys want to say about? I want to eat your pancreas. Yeah, I want to say um the first time I watched it, I thought it was okay, like slightly above mid. I thought it was like a light or diet version of Your Lie in April, which kind of has a similar plot, but it, there's music. Um, it's a, it's in a musical world. Like the dude is a pianist. But now that I think about it, I like this a lot more. I would still recommend Your Lie in April, but this is kind of straightforward, 90 minutes. Yeah. Uh, pretty good for anyone that's getting into anime that is not skeptical but just hasn't watched anything. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. I liked it. Um, yeah. I really like the uh, character evolution. The, uh, main, the main character doesn't just come to love this girl by the end of the movie. He... Yo. Well... So he and actually, that's what I sorry, you, really like about it. you cut out for a second here. Not only does he love the girl, he also loves... He learns to love other people. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just comes out of his shell, generally. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Your closing thoughts, Flooded? Yeah, I really liked it. I, um... It was just... Uh, really sort of you know cute it was sad but it wasn't it wasn't like overly melodramatic like I wasn't you know just like scoffing at the screen or anything like that um, yeah I would say in terms of like I mean I don't watch too much romance stuff generally but this was yeah this was really good this was really cute it wasn't yeah it was just sincere nice little story it wasn't trying to do anything other than tell like a really nice story about these characters which I appreciated and that's basically about it I think alright well uh, you can stay if you want uh, cool guy but we're going to be discussing Donnie Darker now so yeah, I'll, I'll just listen in, and then I'll come up with some sort of uh, BS opinion <laughs> on the movie at the end of it. Uh, you want, do you want to start, or should I start, Flood? You can start. You can start. You can start. G well, give us your overall, overall, like, what's your synopsis? All right, so I'll give my background in the, on the film, and then I'll give my synopsis. When I was, like, 17, 16... This film and Freaks and Geeks, which are like Reddit, they're both Reddit uh, pieces of media. I love them. I watched them as much as I possibly could. Like, I was, uh, to me, I thought this is the most space shit. Like, I want to be like these characters. Even though I had friends, I kind of like wanted to project myself onto these characters. Um, and synopsis wise, I liked watching it again. I thought the Donnie Darko dialogue was a bit Reddit. Like, I don't want to, like, get too non-PG, but, like, a lot of the stuff they said was weird um, in the context. I like the, I think you're the Antichrist line that he, yeah. that Donnie said, but a lot of, like, the, a lot of the dialogue was kind of Reddit for me and didn't age well. A lot of the philosoph uh, philosophical stuff, the time travel stuff was really Reddit, and it wasn't, it was pretty glossed over. Did, now, like, now uh, did you watch the extended or the theatrical cut? Uh, I think it was ex it was like two and a half hours. Oh, okay. That the extended yeah. Version? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the extended cut. Yeah. So it reminded me a lot of Ava, where the the a lot of the plot devices are not are shown off screen or they happen off screen. Yeah. Um, and I don't think this did it as well as that because the characters were not as compelling. But yeah. at the same time, I felt like um, Donnie Darko was a decent film. Like at the beginning. It's very relatable if you're a millennial, you're just like yeah. a burnout kid with friends, yeah. and then um, this girl like wa likes you or whatever. He's uh, so Donnie's like a problem child, flunked a whole grade, can't drive till he's twenty one or whatever, burned down a house. Yeah, uh, and that's all fine and dandy. The only problem I had is he's having a moral dilemma throughout the entire film. He's depressed throughout the entire film, and he gets pussy one time and now he's fine with dying that's his whole moral dilemma i'm gonna die i'm gonna die and then like after that he doesn't even know this girl's real name she changed her name for legal reasons because her stepfather is like uh stalking them her family and he's just fine with dying so to me the whole film just fell apart and was pointless because of that but uh it was enjoyable that's my opinion yeah 
I think um, I yeah watching it I think because you you watched you like watched it before me in preparation for this episode and you were saying like oh dude it doesn't hold up at all um, so I went into it with like pretty low expectations and so I was like oh this is actually this is all right this is pretty good I liked um, I thought the filmmaking itself was like pretty it's like extreme I would say you know it's not just competent like uh, the writing aside from the dialogue I would say the mechanics of the plot and everything it's it's very clever you like you can't deny that it's clever like what's happening um, I really I like some of, some of the characters are good I think he's uh, like he's I like the family dynamic like it's extremely relatable to me uh, that that family dynamic of um, I don't know being the problem child a little bit uh, was relatable um, and just like the tension at the dinner table kind of thing and uh, the, the sister was like, pretty annoying but uh, that's like you know deliberate uh... that's t- do you want, mind if I interject go for it there's a little trope where um, in Freaks and Geeks they do this too where the main character Lindsay I, I don't know you know her real name but there's a trope where the woman the femc wants to vote for the democratic candidate and then her father gets mad at her that's that's like a trope throughout the 80s for some reason yeah. but for this particular election it was a greek um democratic candidate so i thought that was hilarious when i found out Dukakis, yeah 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 i think this movie is like it's almost uh supposed to be in some ways like this I hate to say this, it's almost like a deconstruction of like the high school movie, kind of. Like it seems like that's what he started out writing, and then all these other things like came into it. Because you can see like in a typical eighties high school movie, oh, there's the loser guy, and then a new girl moves to town, and then they like hit it off, and they like fall in love or whatever. Uh, and there's hijinks like oh he floods the school, or they find out that you know oh some guy has a porn stash or something like that. And it's like everything sort of twisted and ele- like heightened in these weird ways. And it's sort of, it's almost like he's saying that it, he's sort of talking about how these high school movies almost function as these like parallel universes as, you know, as in the metaphysics of this Donnie Darko universe. Um, I like his name, Donnie Darko. I like, like some of it's, I think because I've just watched it so many times, this movie, like, cause this was my favorite movie as well. I think when I was 17. So <laughs> I think pretty Same. much, I think pretty much everyone that was like, is our age now. Uh, and was like, you know, the slightly more weird kid in high school, this would have been their favorite movie when they were 16, 17, just about like, I'm, I'm pretty sure like pretty much every guy that I was friends with, this was like their favorite movie at some point. Um, Donnie Darko, isn't that some superhero name? Exactly, and I like that. I like that it's sort of on the nose. I don't think it's... Because it's not... I don't feel like... uh, The moralizing it does is ham-fisted. But I feel like some of the aspects of like trying to explain the mechanics of all this weird time travel stuff... He sort of makes it slightly... It is pretty cryptic, but, like, once you know what the mechanics is and you watch the film, like, two times, it's like, oh, that's why you did that. Oh, that's why you, he, they said that. Um, and do you I think like the that. themes... Do you well, think the themes were executed, pro- like, to their... They were carried out properly. Do you Did you, like, look at the beginning and say, yeah, the writer set out to do what he did properly? Yes. Because the film... So watching it this time, I, you know, the film seems to me, it's like a search for God, search for meaning. And like he, at this, that, I mean, this is probably the most ham fisted scene is when, um, the psychiatrist says to him, you're not an atheist, you're an agnostic. And like at the time, you know, when this movie came out in the two thousands, people didn't necessarily know what the term agnostic meant. So it's kind of, um, it was kind of cringe how she explains it now, but you know, the movie is about him, yeah, like, searching for God, and he, he's not dismissive of the supernatural or anything like that, and he talks about how, um, you know, things are part of God's plan, and how we have to work in God's plan, basically, 
I don't feel like it's nihilistic uh, in its this sort of like quasi determinism it has in it. It's like because it, it's almost. I feel like uh, what's his name? Jesse Kelly. What's his name? The the writer. I, I don't name. remember his name. But I feel like he's just was not very smart when it came to philosophy. So he like didn't quite Richard Kelly. So there's the bit where it's talking about how he says, "Oh, we I can see how everyone's moving through time," and um, then the this physics teacher's like, "Oh, well, wouldn't that mean everything's deterministic, or like something?" But effectively, is what he meant. And then, you know, uh, he doesn't have a good answer for it. But Donnie's like, "No, not necessarily." Basically. I think, uh, I don't agree with you. I think the exposition dumps in this film were very cringe and, like, worse than the average anime. Like, uh, when Donnie, like, he has two choices on the board and his teacher gets mad at him for not deciding if a scenario fits, like, two aspects. I felt like that was a very Reddit, like, way of explaining things. And also when, I don't know if this is a deleted scene or in the final cut, but, um, they're talking about rabbits at one point and Donnie just, like, a rabbit does a rabbit doesn't know anything. All he do- knows is how to breed. And then, like, in a very Reddit way, the-, the teacher just talks down to him and is like, oh, don't you see the bigger picture? And to me, that was, like, too on the nose, yeah. and the dialogue is just yeah. really cringe. Yeah, actually, I don't think... I forgot about all the English English class scenes. They were pretty rough. They were a bit rough. Like, um... Yeah, reading that Graham Greene thing, like, oh, burning down the... Ha- like, destruction is a form of creation. It's like, no, not really. Um, yeah, no, you're right. Th- those, the, the Watership Down scene was, like, particularly, I think that must have been in a, uh, that must not have been in the original film. Because I don't, re- I haven't watched the theatrical cut in ages, so I don't remember what the added bits were. But all the bits with, like, really, sh- like, crappy editing, where it's just, like, a page from the Philosophy of Time Travel book, they're not in the, <laughs> the theatrical cut at all. Like, the theatrical cut does not explain what's going on in the slightest. Which is hilarious when you watch it. And also, uh, I would say my favorite points in the dialogue, uh, I guess, sorry, Flood. It was funny when that Asian girl was at the bus stop and the dudes were like, I hope you get molested. So I just burst out laughing at that. It's like, that's how a teenager my age would act yeah. when I was a millennial. Obviously, like, you'd get arrested for that now. But yeah. uh, And that was so funny when he's like, going back to China. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. That that was a product of its time. Like we obviously can't get away with that anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, the, go ahead. And the way you, uh, there's absolutely what? nothing in my life I ever would have enjoyed this. No, I don't think this is. I don't think this is relatable to Southerners. Well, yeah. Flood. Like the whole point was he's afraid of dying. Like he has sex one time and he's not afraid of dying. Like how is that a good like, okay. theme? Okay. Well, that's not how I would necessarily read it. I mean, like, I think that, yeah, that particular plot point is dumb, but I think it's more like, because if we get get into the mechanics of it, it's closer to something like, um, all right, if you haven't seen this movie, this is going to be annoying, but you've seen Groundhog Day, right? I don't remember it, to be honest. Oh, fuck. Well, basically that movie is a similar thing where he's stuck in a time loop of a day rather than a month. So the implication of this film is, like, obviously he's been in this loop multiple times by the end of the film, right? Yeah. And so it's sort of like, okay, I'm going to do one perfect loop or something, and then he decides to... And then, yeah, obviously part of it is that he has premarital sex, which is, like... It's so... It is really... Like, I would say the, the worst written relationship is definitely between him and that girl, like... What is it's yeah, he does. it's so it is kind of realistic, like that is how like those sort of teenage relationships sort of go, but uh, it's like w- what did he learn from that relationship? Nothing. Well, like I, uh, Donnie doesn't even know Gretchen's real name, like that's a yeah. fake name, and like that's when you're a teenager, that's that's not real love, there's not like a bigger theme when you're a teenager, it's just infatuation. And it shows it because he just had sex with her one time. He didn't really have any meaningful character development between... There was no meaningful yeah. character development between the two. So I didn't really, like... Mm. I didn't feel it played to the strengths of the plot. I don't think, like, it played to the strengths of the theme. I didn't think it was as good as you think it is. 
Oh, I mean, I would say that is a, the weak, one of the weaker aspects of the film. Uh, is that relationship is just not not done well. I I liked. I thought it was so like it's so trippy. Like Patrick Swayze plays this like pedophile. <laughs> it's like, damn, how, where was his career at that point that he was like agreed to this script? <laughs> This if film, I like, was a Hollywood actor, I would play nothing but pedophiles. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Uh, anyway, this film flopped, and like, there's a there's a sequel to it, um, where um, like, it's about Donnie's sister, and they literally got the rights for no money because this film flopped so bad. Yeah, it only became a cult thing like ten years later. Yeah, but it's not good, like Blade Runner or any of the other cult films. I would say. I don't know, like, I have too much nostalgia for this movie to dump on it, I'm sorry, I can't help myself, Rose Tinted Glasses, I'm sure, like, showing this movie to Azuma, they, they would just feel like, this is the gayest thing I've ever watched, but, like, I don't know, this hits different if you were born in the mid to late 90s, I'll say that much. Well, I was flooded, and I loved this film when I was a teenager, but now that I'm an adult, like, what's the point, what, what was the, in what entertained you about this film, is my question. I found the writing clever. I liked the... like. I thought it was an interesting sci-fi thing, like the time loop thing. I appreciated how it doesn't explain it directly. Um, and like, I think that's sort of cope. To appreciate the, the writing, like how... It, a th Dude, no. If you look at uh, Serial Experiments Lane or Ava... Like these off screen scenarios, they don't happen, but no one justifies them. They just believe the strengths of the, those animes carry them, like the characters and the themes. Yeah, like, but I'm just saying, I'm saying I, I appreciate a story that doesn't like give you every single little detail and you have to piece things together through like context clues and things like that. Like, I don't feel like I, I, I don't feel like I'm, I agree. All right, go, yeah, go ahead. I agree, but I don't think it, this is clever, and I don't think it played to the strength of the film. I don't believe that. I wasn't like, oh, wow, that was like so clever after figuring everything out. I think it's pretty clever. That it's in a time loop. It's, so it's basically... Because I've... Watching it again, I'm like, oh, this is basically Groundhog Day if they didn't explain that it was he was stuck in a time loop. Which I thought was like an interesting concept. It was just cool to have a movie. I don't know. I think I I appreciate. I think because of the time it came out and like clearly the maturity of the writer, there's a lot of flaws to it. But I think that there's a lot of there are interesting things that I liked. I don't know. I liked it. I liked it. Still. I'm burned out on time loops. This was. Yeah. Now that's a common. That's a trope so much now, but. When this came out, it was there had only been like Groundhog Day basically before it. I mean, I'm sure there was other stuff, but I don't know. I like this. Yeah. Um, Seth Rogen's in this movie. He's probably the funniest character. I thought that was his like two bits in it were good. Seth Rogen. Like that's so funny. Um, so, like the girl, like the girl, <laughs> like calls him out for like a bad joke, and he's like. Oh, didn't your dad, like, stab your mom? <laughs> it's just such a crass way to, like, come back to someone, but it's hilarious. Dude, that was one of the best lines in the movie. Like, whenever those dudes are mean, those are the best lines. Yeah, that was hilarious. Seeing anything with Seth Rogen in it these days is incredible, because, like, one of the Swijaks is based off of him, so I just mm. see, like, a, a live-action Swijak the entire time he's on screen. Yeah. Um, I think Shia LaBeouf is in this, like when they're uh, went during the assembly with Patrick Swayze or whatever. Is he one of the kids? Yeah. Damn. Although it was it's interesting as well, everyone. it's a it's a Catholic school. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm assuming the writer was a raised Catholic, so probably agnostic, aka atheist, though. Standard Catholic school uh, alumni. Um. Yeah, I think there were, like, lots of interesting things that the movie could have explored better. Like, the wheel die alone thing could have been more done more interestingly. But... I th 
Yeah. I will say the the slice of life elements or reverse slice of life elements were my favorite. Generally, when you watch like a slice of life, it's wholesome chungus moments that uh, like you like. But in this one, I I loved the hate. Like I I liked yeah, how yeah, yeah, every, yeah. Every, everyone was so like awful to each other and that's what ruined it for me like when they condescend to you and give an exposition dump and they're like oh here's two choices like this scenario doesn't fall in the, into either choice you're like yeah they all yeah, like yeah, when yeah, they're yeah. when they're dunking on everyone they condescend so badly and it's like yeah. how much like that completely breaks the flow of the film to me yeah the whole fear love thing is like very like just because the movie doesn't say anything about morality other than morality is difficult which is not an interesting thing to say you know, and uh, I th I thought the 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 woman that was like obsessed with Patrick Swayze was funny. You know, that's kind of a played out character now, like busybody, you know, PTA mom. But it was it was it's still funny, I think. Like uh, the line when she says, "I'm beginning to seriously doubt your commitment to Sparkle Motion." Is that's funny? You can't deny that. Um, yeah. But I was going to say, the time travel and, like, the funny scenes don't carry it for me. Like, when I was 17, that's all I wanted in a film. I just wanted to be entertained, and I didn't care about, like, the plot. But since we're, quote-unquote, deconstructing everything, this film is not very intelligent, in my opinion. I think it's intelligently written, like, the mechanics of it are, are clever. I think the themes fall flat, but I think the... Because there's a lot going on in terms of you know, the fact that it is a time loop and everything does sort of tie together narratively. I think it is narratively impressive, but yeah, the themes, I don't agree with aspects of it. Or like some of it's well, not done well. I'll say this. Do you think uh, it was the aesthetic that drew you to this film? Or like, do you think actually the concept of the character of Frank is like extremely intelligent? The concept? I think... Well, you have to admit it's a cool aesthetic. Yeah, that's what drew me to it. That's why I'm <laughs> asking. Uh, I like... Uh, that is one of the weak elements, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Because like... honestly, when I like reflect on Donnie Darko, when I think about it, I like forget about Frank is even in it. He's it's a plot device for the time time travel, though. You yeah. you can't just say it's intelligent and then say I forget about like one of the main. <laughs> parts I just of the I time like I just like how I like how it all ties together. I don't know. I like how it ties together. I like I liked that when you find out that the crazy old lady wrote the book that he's reading. That's cool. I don't know. There's okay, lots of so little it, cute things about. I like the movie, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The, the way I and I'll, I'm fine with that. If all right, so this. In my opinion, to me, this is like when you said, read Evola. This is a guilty pleasure. You're not actually defending the film. <laughs> I never said read Evola. Well, you said it's it's bad, but it's like a guilty pleasure or something. It's, it's <laughs> something maybe, that's enjoyable. Okay, I think, okay, maybe we can call Donnie Darker a guilty pleasure. I guess that's a fair. I guess that's fair. It's a weird sort of guilty pleasure. Because I, I can't, like come to the conclusion that this is a above a seven out of ten film even oh, seven no. push. Oh, seven's fair seven's pretty fair seven is fair yeah. the plot is incoherent the characters how is it incoherent? are bad how is it incoherent the... <laughs> i'm not finished the di the themes are uh... reddit and dumb the dialogue is bad do you, all right explain frank explain every all the time travel to me right now do, give a synopsis of the plot Okay, so, actually, I don't remember a lot of the aspects of it, because I didn't... Exactly, I didn't... it's not memorable. Basically, for some reason, the, the the jet engine creates a time loop for some reason, because he was supposed to die, but he doesn't die, and then the person that dies in the loop, with some... but then why does Gretchen die? I, I, I think she dies because explain. because Donnie is like denying the fact that he's gonna die, and she's like one uh, of the people that get caught uh, in that. Yeah, it's a dumb film. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah, what you just described there, Flood, is really really dumb. No, 
It's a bit dumb. Like, it's a, the movie I doesn't think... even sound good when you try to make it sound good. I like the music. The music's cool. I like the 80s aesthetic. Uh, late 80s aesthetic. Um, yeah, the aesthetic is bass, but, like, that's that's all it has going for it, really, the aesthetic of the film. Mm. I don't know. I, when I rewatched it, I had I really enjoyed it. That's all I'll say. You admitted you... I admitted what? Ahead. You admitted, like, most of the film is bad. The themes, the character development... No, no, uh, no, the... no. When did I say the character development was bad? You just admitted Gretchen and Donnie's like relationship oh, is yeah. dumb, and that that that's the whole point of the film. Like Donnie, accepts how is that the whole death? Because Donnie accepts his death because of that relationship. Yeah. Mm. So more, you're admitting more than half of the film is bad. Not more than half. Come on, I like. I mean, I the Drew Barrymore stuff is kind of funny. I don't know, this is something so... I don't know, this this film is very charming. It's like, it is that... It's not... The thing is, it was Reddit... It Maybe it is sort of Reddit, but not... Uh, not in the same way as, like... I don't know, like, you think of Rick and Morty. Like, this is, this is better than Rick and Morty. Yeah, but that's because this came out in, like, the early 2000s, and Rick and Morty came out, like, right now. Yeah, but okay, so we're settling on a 7 out of 10 for this. Uh, I'm thinking a 6, man. Damn. Well, no, I'll, I'll say, like, the average anime, which is not, like, based, is more based than this movie that comes out today. Like, an a, a, if I can pick a random anime from 2022 and, like, compare it to this, it is less Reddit. Hmm. I think you're coping flooded. Yeah. I think I'm just bad at arguing. No, you're good at arguing. It's just that there's nothing to defend about this film. <laughs> like you tried to say the the um, the time travel was intelligent, but you didn't even know how to explain Gretchen's involvement in it. You didn't like you couldn't explain how it's intelligent that uh, Donnie just accepted his death because and the, how the time travel plays in. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense that he's like super in love with her and that he would f finally accept his death because she died. I guess. Imagine getting stuck in a time loop, and instead of using it for repentance, you have sex and then go to hell. Yeah. True. It's like, I mean, he, like, realizes, I guess, that, you know, him being in this time loop, it's like all these other people are suffering because of it. Hmm. And he realizes that after fornicating, that's literally, like, one of the themes of the film. <laughs> yeah they really should have just like kissed or so had some other th and it's like he went on one date with her where he she fell asleep in the movie theater and then he goes and burns down a guy's house <laughs> dude i used i used to have that as my header on twitter on my personal twitter her donnie and frank in the rabbit outfit that's a cool and that that's a cool shot though that's a cool shot it is but that's what i'm saying the aesthetic carries this film if you think about it for any amount of time like you can't say it's good and oh. even now because I, I we're hip to the reddit stuff like when i was 17 i didn't even know what reddit what like i might have been on reddit a little bit but i never used it i didn't know like their lingo and how they spoke so to me that ex those exposition dumps and like those arguments weren't i didn't realize they were cringe until now so now that i know that like i, I can't really enjoy them i don't know i did not mind the expedition dumps i thought i thought that the supernatural elements in this were genuinely interesting like you I, just said Frank Frank is not interesting. No, I'm, well, I meant... I don't know what I meant by that. I don't know, like, I think the... Like, when he sees the... The, the like, what do you call it? The things come out of people's chest. That's cool. I thought that was cool. Okay, I'll say this. How did, uh... How did you feel about Donnie, like, participating in all of these events, like, burning the school or whatever? I don't even remember, like, what happened. You probably remember more, because you were more interested in it than me. Well, when he, uh, like, floods the school. Yeah. That was cool. 
like do did you think those events like actually can all of what Donnie did that he, they don't show on screen and you have to put piece it together do you think that was clever how they uh, the way it was directed yeah yeah I like that okay and I'll give you that one thing but everything else about the time travel and everything really was executed poorly that's literally the only interesting thing about this like I would say a yeah. lot of people say Serial, serial Experiments Lane is like lame, it's boring, it's a slog because it's not like a chronological story, but with this like there's, but with that there's a lot of interesting concepts with this, it's, it really only relies on Donnie like doing cool stuff that he doesn't remember or that's shown off screen, it doesn't really like the time travel stuff is not that interesting The fact that he's in a time loop and like the, the the way that this uh, tangent universe is like sort of bending to his will so slowly, that's kind of cool. Oh, and actually, just a lot. You said this was a deconstruction of like teenage rom com films. Can you elaborate on that? Because like, no, I mean like, that's what I felt like it was. Like, uh, I feel like that's kind of like what part of the idea was of it. Like, I wouldn't say it's a one to one parody or like satire or anything of it. Like, there's this element because. You know, in a typical um, high school film, you'll it, it will be about like a mid to low tier popularity character gets the girl, beats up the bullies or whatever. Um, you know, has a teacher that he likes, and it's it's sort of like okay, well, uh, you know, there could be some hijinks where he floods the school in, like say a typical eighties movie and then it's like well in the it's like it's almost like he's compelled to do it because that's how it would happen these are the things that happen in a like a movie i would say this is kind of just like a nerdier version of breakfast club then but neither film is compelling and like neither film holds up now that we know what reddit this is, is better than the film. breakfast club come on they're like both six out of ten films damn damn like it's We'll defend it, Flood. You just said the only good things it has going for it are the time travel, and that's it. And I like Donnie. It. I like the dad. I like the family characters. I thought that was well written and realistic. What about the sister? She's annoying, but she's well written. She's like accurately written. I like. I did like Donnie's family, to be honest. I'll say. Oh, that. But okay. Like, oh, okay. Okay. They, okay. But they don't. But it, it's not a this film is based around the plot it's not based around the characters and you can't, like, why you can't just you can't just say oh we talk when we talk about a movie where that you like and then the plot is bad you're like oh don't worry it's not <laughs> oh, about the plot oh, and now oh, it's, oh, and now it's a movie you're like oh, biased against oh, and you're like oh I'm actually yeah ga i'm gaslighting you hold on let me finish this <laughs> unlike unlike i want to eat your pancreas uh... which did revolve around the characters this revolves around the time travel um, little gimmick that they have in the film, oh, how, and no, the less clearly, clearly not because that then it doesn't show it. The point of it is the character, his like own. It is the it is a character study in many ways of the Donnie Darker, like a troubled kid. You know, tr but it's Reddit. You just admitted like all of the philosophical well, moments. I think that like I think okay, okay. The thing is, the linchpin of why it's cringe is the premarital sex. We can agree on that, no, dude. The dialogue, like when the dialogue's not that Reddit, bad. When they're talking about the rabbit, rabbits, the feel and love, those expositions. Okay, okay, are okay. One, that one, that one, that one watership down bit is bad. I just named you yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, add yeah. One, yeah. There's, there's three at least, and those are the ones I remember. The watership down one is the rabbit one. And 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 the one where like Donnie just starts randomly like he's in a trance and the the psychiatrist or whatever makes him masturbate. That's like weird, dude. <laughs> um. <laughs> is that the pedophile character? No, 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 no. That's um, the Patrick. Okay, you gotta admit the Patrick Swayze stuff's good. Yeah, it was funny when he called him the Antichrist. Patrick Swayze stuff's good. The PTA meeting was funny. Uh, honestly, yeah. weird does not equal bad. Damn, Jack, Jack Aranda, he he decided to opt out, and he he wants to come on and defend now, but. <laughs> All right, have him on. Have him on. I, I'm gonna head out. Good night, guys. Okay, see All right, man. God bless. Do you want to come? Do you want to come on, Jacaranda? 
Jack didn't want. He said he wanted to blow his brains out before watching Donnie Darko, and now he's gonna come on to Cape for like a Reddit film. <laughs> Wait, is he still, is he still listening? Jack, you can come on if you want to defend uh, the movie. I'll let me ping him. Defend the integrity of Reddit. He might be he might be like out and just like listening to it on his headphones though. Let's see. All right. Oh, wait. Why is Aram here? Aram, you're not invited. I'm sorry. <laughs> he just left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he wants to join to hear it firsthand. Oh, okay, okay, fine. Okay, no, Jack does not want to come on. Okay. Well. Jack does. Okay, so what were we on then? Okay. We're on. Uh... The Patrick Swayze stuff is good. Yes, which I agree, and the the time travel stuff good. As, oh, good aesthetic. his dog, oh. his dog just died, and Eddie's home. So you were admitting the aesthetic of the film is good. That's something to appraise it on. You can't just say, "I do." Well, you, I look, live. look, look, look. You're saying like, "Oh, we can't. We have to appraise it on this one, this aspect of it that is clearly bad." But no. we can't, let's we can't add up all the good things about it to like oh, oh. make it the movie better. Oh. Hold on, hold on. What? What? Dude, you're saying the aesthetic. Do you, do you know how dumb anyone would sound if they're saying a film is good based on the aesthetic? I'm like, saying that's, that's a good thing. quality. I'm saying that's a good quality. That pushes. Yes, I admitted that, but that's not what the film is based. This is a plot based film. It's not yeah. based on anim animation it, okay, or yeah. special effect. You don't just it's watch it. Okay, I'm so, like, well, I don't know why you're obsessing with this, but when you watch a movie, there's different elements. And how is this a plot based film, first of all? I don't agree with that at all. You admitted the character, de the main relationship, the character development is bad. You can't hang your hat. You're gonna hang your hat on Donnie and Gretchen's relationship. You think I'm not. The I'm not. I'm not. The fan, the stuff with the family is good. The friends are good. I like the his interactions with the teachers were good, even if they were slightly cringe. They were good. I don't. I disagree with that. Uh, I, th I think his interactions with the teachers were pretty cringe. I just thought I liked it. I, when he's talking to the physics teacher, and then the physics teacher's like, oh, I can't continue this conversation. Oh, that was cool. It's just, I like how there's little things about it when you understand that the mechanics of the tangential universe is all about him. And it sort of functions as this thing about how, you know, teenage boys that are like this, they think the whole world revolves around them. And it's like him trying to, has to effectively grow up and accept that's not how the world works. Well, this is off screen. It's not like something that is okay. So, that you, so what? I can't say benefited. positive things about the plot, and then when yeah. I do, you're like, it's well, off screen. Hold on. You, you you said it was dumb. Like you you admitted the like time travel thing at the uh, ultimately is not good. Like it's not ultimately executed well. That's not what I said. I said elements of it, like the fact I the fact that a lot of it hinges on his his decisions. The presentation does is unfortunate because it seems to because it makes it hinge too much on the fact that he has this thing with Gretchen. And also, you appealed to a third party source before with uh, "I want to eat your pancreas" about the mango. What third parties? <laughs> All right, appeal to a third party source. This well, I'm saying in the these are these are things that are implicit to the movie if you watch it like two or three times, like that. That's not a criticism well, to say you have to watch a movie two or three times to like it. Hold up. Hold on, that's not even, like, you didn't even understand the last scene and I want to eat your pancreas. Like, if you watched it properly, you would have known. I'm pulling up out. the, I'm pulling up the friggin, what? Pull let, up. Let me get the friggin movie out. Where is, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> let me, let me find this shit. Uh, if I, okay, if, let's, oh man, I better not be wrong here. Yeah, I did watch the after credit scene, all right? So you can't accuse me of not having watched that, okay. You didn't understand it, though. It was too highly nuanced for you. Maybe. Okay, let's see. Okay. <laughs> Let me get the... Okay, here we go. I'm watching it, okay. You came all this way? I'm watching it right now. Okay. We're waiting. The world is watching. All right. All right, then she gives him the gum. Because there's the gum, and if everyone will know, there's the gum, the guy that kept offering people gum in the movie, who is a male character. 
Thanks. You like gum? I've taken a liking to it recently, is what she says. Huh? He says. So that's how it is. Well, we won't start dating until after entrance exams. I'm sure that'll make him motivated to study for exams too. So is he talking to her about himself in the third person? Dude, all that matters is they agreed to start dating after the entrance exams. No, that but... was the whole point. So is she currently dating the gum guy? Because she gives him the gum, so I assumed that was from the gum guy. She's like gotten into gum because she's now with the gum guy. No, that's you just completely filled in those blanks by yourself. There's no way she's with the gum guy. She hands him gum. The only other reference to gum in the film is this one other character that offers people gum. Why would she offer to date him if she's with another guy? She isn't. She's she's referring to the gum guy because he's like, oh, that's how it is. You're with the gum guy. I think you're just misinterpreting oh, it, bro. Maybe. You're just you're just maybe. being Protestant. You're saying that a solo scripture is in the Bible, <laughs> even though it's not. So, but he says but, that will motivate him to study. So, is he referring to himself in the third person? That's what you're saying. That was what dude, my subtitle said. At the, at the end of the day, like canonically, they get yes, together. Yes, but that's so, yeah. yeah, but that's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. What we're talking there about. There is he, never. There's never a reference to her with the gum guy. That's my point. You can't find a reference to that anywhere. In, she in, hands him in, gum. In, She's like, oh, I like gum now, as in, I like the gum guy, alright? I'm reading between the lines oh, here. <laughs> the gum guy was in one scene, like, two three scene. scenes, yeah. two scenes? Like, come on, dude. Yeah, he's an, he's an established other male character that she could be with. And all well, I'm saying doesn't... is, all I'm saying is, the subtitle reads, that'll motivate him to study for the entrance entrance exams all right so i don't canonically maybe they end up together but maybe they i don't know have you have you did you read that manga dude they end up together and they have did a you daughter. but not... did you wait did you read the manga though have you read that manga no i'm not you haven't spend... <laughs> you haven't read the manga and you're telling me what's in it oh my gosh because it's so oh my gosh oh my important. gosh Everyone. I cannot believe this. I cannot believe this. You're arguing with me about it's, this it, scene for 10 it's minutes. It's an important plot point. It's an important plot point, which is universally acknowledged. No one disputes it. So why would I not bring it up? Who disputes this, Flood? What do you mean, who disputes this? I'm not, like, talking to people about this movie all the time. No... I'm just saying this is an established Okay, yeah, but they might... Okay, maybe they end up together at the end of the manga, but maybe in the first couple chapters she's still with the gum guy, alright? Neither of us have read it. We don't know. Dude, you're just like... I don't even know what you're doing. Like, they end up together, and it was clear from that scene. Right. I don't know why you needed the manga to tell you that, but it was clear. And my point was... I like, didn't need the, the manga. You did, because you didn't know that she ended up with him. But my whole point was... Uh, it w the time travel stuff was not told intelligently. Like, it relied on Gretchen and Donnie's relationship to complete it. It, uh, if being off screen didn't kill it, uh, that's not, like, even the thing. It's just that you can't just, it's not the same as if it was on screen. You can't give it that much credit. I'm not saying that. But what, part of the what, film is what bad. aspect needed to be on, like, on screen? Like, do you think, because either way, like, to have this sci fi setup, you, you know, like, regard, like, no, every sci-fi film, you have to explain it in some way or another. I thought the way that they explained it in this film was interesting. Like, it's not like, you know, Back to the Future, are you going to say, oh, there was an exposition jump where they explained the mechanics of the movie that makes this movie bad? No, the only thing that they did was, like, they Donnie holds a book, there's an exposition dump. He talks to people, there's an with that book and there's exposition dumps there's not like a coherent thing but I thought they were interesting it's not... dumps though they're, it's because it's like it's cool like oh the the metal receiver and the the weapon and blah 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 the fire I thought it was cool like not like just because you you do show and or you tell doesn't necessarily make something bad like you know books have exposition oh, dumps well I'll say that I, I'll say this I think they pl uh, I'll <laughs> reference Blade Runner 2049 I think they played it safe and a lot of people were mad that they played it safe because, oh, they tell you at the end that uh, who the who Deckard's child is. I'm not going to spoil everything. Um, and a lot of people were mad that they played it safe and just told you. But in this film, 
they just give you a bunch of exposition dumps they tell you anyway but it's in such an incoherent manner I didn't think it was that incoherent Cause it's just, dude it he just holds he, he just holds a book and talks but there's the there's the bits where it like has it like has bits from the book like come up on the screen. But that wasn't enough to extrapolate the fact. Oh, and I'm not even saying that like oh it it all has to happen on screen. I'm saying that um it just was not that well executed the time loop things. How so? The more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm thinking it is well executed. How is it well executed? Well, it's. Because you, you know that, okay, so there has to be the person that the whole uh, tangential universe revolves around. Well, that's obviously Donnie. And then all the other references are, ob are obvious. Like, there's a metal object. Well, that's clearly the jet engine. It's not, like, that complicated. You just have to pay slightly more attention. I know. Attention. I, it's, not, it's not complicated. I understand. I'm just saying it's not well executed. How? Dude, it's just not... Inter like... This is like a serial experiments lane thing. You would understand if you watched more anime. Like people criticize it for not like being like I don't know if chronological would be the correct term in this regard, but it's just not that well executed. It, like it's aesthetically it's cool the jet engine into his room like when he's like flooding the school when he's like doing all this stuff when he kills Frank with the gun or whatever. Very cool aesthetically. But like, the themes behind it and the story behind it, like, that Gretchen uh, makes him face his death, that he's, like, worried about uh, dying, and he's, like, uh, jacking off in front of his psychiatrist. Like, all of the stuff around it is dumb. Yeah, but if anything, that's the psychiatrist stuff is pointing out how pointless and bad the psychiatry is and how retarded she is. Like, I don't feel like it's portraying psychiatry positively at all. Well, I would agree with that. But... So then... You can't say, oh, there's a weird scene where it's criticizing psychiatry. And I mean, that's a bad a, scene. The, the, the fact that it's criticizing psychiatry is not the problem. <laughs> the problem is it's Reddit. I think this movie's a 10 and, out of 10, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> and like you and Jack said, everything that I don't like is Reddit, which is 100% factual. <laughs> yeah. Wait, you think. So, okay, Greg, you thought. 10 out of 10, uh, Gretchen and I'll say the, relationship I'll say the, the dialogue, the look, themes, the exposition dumps, the, the character development, all of that was great. I liked, I did not, I liked the exposition dumps because I thought that the law was interesting. I thought the law was interesting, so I didn't, I thought those scenes were cool. I didn't think it was like that, I'm trying to think of like a better example, but they're still well acted, like it's, when characters are right, explaining things, I thought it was interesting. I'll say this: If we take all the relevant parts of the film, the, I, look, the I'll plot, give you, I'll give you that the Gretchen and his relationship is underwritten. They needed like another scene of them actually. Well, it's not just the, it's the character development, it's the themes, it's like the pa I, I can't, I guess I can't really say the pacing, the the but, okay, but the I mean like I the, like the dialogue I, ex in the... I explained like my perspective on the on the themes. Do you feel like that that is a boring? There, there was a boring ideas or that there that's not what was I, well, in there. I, Dude, I literally told you, like, the thing where, like, he feel in love or whatever, like, that was, you admitted that's cringe, the, um, what else? I, I told you another thing, but I, I, it's, Damn. it's escaping me now. There was, like, two very, oh, the rabbit scene. Those the two rabbit were scene really was weak. All right, you named two mid scenes. But those were themes the, of the plot. Okay, okay, but the, the fear and love, uh, scene even if thematically it was kind of cringe that scene was still funny it was still a good scene no it wasn't because the dialogue was cringe and the the themes were cringe it was funny how it cuts to the principal's office that's like one percent of the scene bro. that's the next that's the next scene the whole that whole scene that whole philosophizing the whole themes it's all reddit like he's just yelling at a teacher and explaining to her like you're dumb that you can't like like a redditor would say you can't just um yeah, you can't what? dilute everything yeah go ahead i mean maybe that's not the most profound thing ever but like would you, you i wouldn't disagree with that with what he's saying it's not that it's not profound it's straight up bad like i'm cringing watching this <laughs> the only like times i'm having fun is when like the guy said to your dad stab your mom or like i hope you get molested 
or I, like when I'm la- when I'm having fun with this film, it's the aesthetic or someone said something funny. Like the the main portions of the film, like Fred or not Fred Frank, which you admitted is not explained well, which is a huge portion of the time travel. And uh, the theme where he fornicates and he's fine with dying, which is another part of the time travel. Those are two major parts. You can't just like hand wave those away and say. Okay, they okay, don't, okay, like... okay. I like the Fr- the Frank costume is like ten out of ten. We can give it that much. I I think I I like how it does come in at the very end. It's like oh Frank, that's the sister's like boyfriend or whatever. And yeah, but um. Yeah, I mean, like, him as this sort of angel or whatever, or, like, entity, like, trying to guide him through the loop. Uh, yeah, doesn't... Didn't... Yeah, I mean, it, it works pretty well. I would say it's, like, not the the cool... Like, the coolest wow. aspect of it. I like... I like... No, but I like how clearly all the events happen to make the... The, this universe like worked for him so he gets the girl like um he has one night with a girl that he doesn't know her name <laughs> like that's that's profound yeah I mean I don't think it's profound it's realistic Wait, when you were 17 like how do you think that the situation would have gone down oh, if you were in a time I, loop I, 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 lo- I loved this film when I was 17 I thought it was the best thing ever Okay, so it's realistic, is what you're saying. If you were stuck in a time loop, this is well, how it would it, go down. It it appealed to me completely, but if I was 17, I would have gone to Gehenna because I would have fornicated and died after. But what I'm saying is, if you were in a time loop when you were 17, is this pretty similar to what would have happened? Uh, no, I would have joined in with the bullies and said, "Didn't your dad stab your mom?" <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, let me see if I've got any other notes of things that I actually want to say about this movie. Uh... This was a fun episode. This was a good one. I think everyone will enjoy this one quite a lot. Uh... Oh, and I like it. The there's you know there's a few like the songs are really good. So the song choice is a ten out of ten. You got to get ten out of ten soundtrack. Yeah, I would say that it goes with any film in the 80s, like Freaks, and even the show Freaks and Geeks, they all have good soundtracks, because, like, the 80s music is generally, like, safe, relatable, um, mm-hmm. the rock the rock bands from that time are not too bad. Uh, oh, there was a something someone said that reminded me of, a, like, a Nietzsche thing, but I've forgotten what it was. Tie it into Evelyn instead. Pardon? Tie it into Evola instead of mm. Nietzsche. And I liked uh, the end um, when Gretchen comes to the party. It's Love Will Tear Us Apart is playing. I thought that was a cute little. Wow, she fornicated with a dude and she never told him <laughs> her his yeah, never. Well, you know yeah. what I'm. It should so be profound. I. <laughs> Like, oh, I don't even know who this person is, but I feel it in my heart that, uh, I feel something in my heart. Like, that's, it's such, such cope, dude. It's such cringe. I don't know if he necessarily would go to hell, because he, it was like, because at the end, he did, it is sort of like a repentance of, like, at least his selfishness. Of, like, I don't keeping think he regrets fornicating. Do you think he regrets fornicating? No, okay. He, well, insofar as he regrets keeping everyone in this tangent universe for so long and um like not letting them get on with their actual lives well the, the i did that's not what i said did he regret fornicating or not if he did i'm not, just saying it's then... a noble he did make a relatively noble choice at the end insofar as he did end the universe the yeah, tangent universe if we're, if we're 17 and we're moral relativists of course this is profound this is the well, best what should he ever. have done what should he have done done the loop just i mean Hey, oh, whatever, what, what, whatever. okay all right hold on, hold on what should he, do you think what he did was ama- great like would you have done exactly the same if, if i were, was 17 yeah it would no if you had your mind right now what would you do if i had my mind right now i'd be like i'm probably already in hell if you had your if you had your if I, okay if 20, I 20 whatever year old mind and you were donnie darko now uh at 17 or whatever what would you do i'd be like why am i still in high school 
So you thought I don't know. I mean, it... is what you're saying. <laughs> I like Donnie as a character. Like he's, you know, he's the edgy whatever. But it was before that became as played out as it is now, at least. It was always Reddit. We just didn't know what Reddit was. Like we were just in denial. We didn't know any better. All right. All right. Well, I think I think unless unless either of us have more to say. I think we should leave it there. I thought it was, and it was cool as well. Um, one other little detail. This is one thing I'll say is, um, this is not necessarily in defense of the film, but this is a cool detail. I liked was, um, uh, there's like a very mild implication that, um, his, cause at one point his dad is saying, talking about like a guy that died on his way to prom when he went to, when he was in school, like Frankie Fiedler, and it's like, oh, like he was, an- he was probably not, that was probably another tangent universe sort of thing. I don't know, I thought it was cool. I was going to say one last thing. I wanted to mention this, like, to- right after we finished uh, the Donnie Darko topic, uh, the whole point of this was death. Who, who do you think handled death better, Donnie or uh, the girl <laughs> from I Want to Eat Your Pancreas? <laughs> yeah, I guess in terms of acceptance of death type movies. Yeah, I'll say I want to eat your pancreas is better, more mature. That's all I. I'll, that's I'll, all I. I'll definitely say I want to eat your pancreas is a more mature film. I'll agree to you that much. In so in so far as Donnie Darko is is quite is extremely angsty. It's, it's very childish. Even the dialogue, it's like very speaking. It's archetypal. Of... Yeah. I don't know. I. Right. It's a good movie in my opinion. I think it's worth watching. What would you give it out of 10? Donnie Darko? Probably an 8. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, I think what? 8 I think eight is fair. You just said it's childish. I said it's immature. I said it's angsty. And it's... A 20-whatever-year-old man, you're recommending a 20-whatever-year-old man. Here, watch this childish film. <laughs> I recommend all kinds of films for all kinds of people. All right, that's the variety of this show. That's why. That's why this. This is why I make the big bucks with this show. True. Um. If I mean the thing is, either you're a millennial and you've already watched this movie, or you're a zoomer and I don't know what if you would like this movie or not necessarily. But um. I mean, I liked it when I was a teenager. I'll, that this was my favorite film. That's a disclaimer. Yeah. Um. Well, we can both recommend "I Want to Eat Your Pancreas." We didn't. We never explained the title, and I don't think you know. We don't. We don't really need to. Are you? Sh- well, I. I just always thought like it was. They just told the Nirvana lyric, "I wish I could eat your cancer," but then they tied it into her having pancreatic cancer, and then like if you there's like a myth if you eat a pancreas, like your pancreas will get better. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I. I mean, I. I get why it's called that, but I was just. I was just remembered. We didn't explain the title, but. Yeah, I just explained it real quick. It's whatever. Yeah, you're good. You're good like that. All right, all right. This is a very contentious episode, but that's why, that's why I have to have Zal Luca on every now and then. Keep me on yeah. my toes. Well, what's the next? What's the next movie we disagree on vehemently that we need to discuss? I don't know. I want to pick one, bro. I'm down to argue <laughs> with you. Oh. All right. Well. Uh. Follow. I think I've got you, you and uh, cool guys ats in the description. Make yeah. sure to go follow them. This is a very, uh, yeah, this is a fun episode, a bit contentious, but it was good fun. Um, all right, thank you everyone for listening, and we'll catch you next time. All right, ending the stream now. All right.